Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number 17, Weekly Thought, The iPad Arrives. Well, welcome, and this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast. I'm Tim, and I'm your host of this show, and this morning, this day, I bring to you my thoughts on the iPad world and what has been going on these past few days as the iPad embargo has been lifted. Those that have had the iPad for now a week are able to talk about it, they're able to share their insights and what they have been experiencing with the iPad. A lot of great information has been coming out and all of it or most of it has been positive. They're saying this is a real computer. This is a viable device to replace most of what you use your laptop for. And it's been exciting as different things have been coming out, different things, different ideas about what you can do with the iPad now. So I'm going to be talking about all of that this morning in this week's Weekly Thought. The iPad Arrives. This show is brought to you by It's On My Way for the iPhone. Finding efficient routes for stops along your route? Groceries and gifts? No problem. It's on my way. Flowers and formal wear? No problem. It's on my way. Post office and party supplies? No problem. It's on my way. Just search for it in the App Store. It's on my way for $2.99 and find the routes you need to find. I'd like to thank It's On My Way for sponsoring this show and especially for sponsoring this uh, the trip Saturday so I can visit with Ryan Anderson to give you a full day of coverage on the Apple iPad. Well, I'd like to simply announce at the beginning of this show the plans for Saturday. This Saturday, as everyone knows, is the iPad's release date. So you'll probably be receiving this weekly thought either Saturday morning or if you're using the application Friday morning. So I'd like to just announce for everybody what's going on this Saturday. As you've heard in the past, It's On My Way is actually sponsoring me to travel from Indianapolis, Indiana to join Ryan Anderson in Cincinnati to cover the iPad, streaming live video all day through our Ustream channel. We'll be doing that through multiple iPhones as batteries run out. We'll just be swapping them out with different iPhones that we all own. And we'll be bringing you a full day of coverage through Ustream and doing different live shows throughout the day. We'll be doing a comparison show of... I'm going to be bringing down my Newton Message Pad 2100 and my Newton e 300 and giving our thoughts on where Apple came from and comparing the devices and having both on hand. We'll be doing interviews at the Apple Store. We'll be arriving at the Cincinnati Apple Store around 8.30 a.m. The store opens at 9 and doing interviews with those in line. And I'll be doing uh, some coverage as I'm actually driving down and just giving my thoughts as I'm driving down. Saturday morning, we'll be going to Ryan's house, unboxing, do a live unboxing of the iPad, all on the Possibilities Network. We'll be doing multiple live shows. We'll be answering your questions, so send those questions in. And we'll be answering all sorts of just different questions that I've had. We'll be doing a lot of just different playing with the device, playing with different apps. We'll be doing just all sorts of just testing of this new device, giving you a full day of coverage on the Apple iPad. And check it out all here on the Possibilities Network with the iPad Possibilities Podcast. Find it just by searching uh, in the Possibilities Network for the iPad Possibilities and just go to the live show page and we'll be streaming live all day. The schedule will be up closer to the time. Right now, I'm not sure the actual times we'll be doing everything except for when we'll be arriving at the Apple Store. So go to the Possibilities Network, the iPad Possibilities Podcast live show page for all the latest information on the trip down to Cincinnati for the iPad launch. And really quickly here, I'd like to play back a voicemail message I received regarding last week's Weekly Thought on what it was like, what it was like to experience the iPhone for the first time. So you can send in your voicemail on that thought as well. I'd love to hear more thoughts on this, but I'm going to play back this thought really quickly right now for you. Yeah, I just want to say I remember when I got my first iPhone and I can't couldn't believe the uh, possibilities that you could do with the applications and just browsing the internet opened up a whole new world to mobile 
surfing the web, and I can't wait to see what the iPad does. I know it's going to change the way we do anything, read books, listen to music, watch movies. It's just going to change. It's going to change everything like the iPod did. Apple just knows how to take a product and make everyone love it and just change society and how we use things and make a whole ecosystem of great products, and I love the show. I would like to thank you for sending in that audio uh, comment, audio thought on what it was like back then. So, as always, please send in your voice comments, your feedback to 209-542-IPAD. I'd love to hear what you think about today's content and previous shows. So, I wanted to share with everybody some very cool insights that have been coming out since the iPad has been lifted from the embargo. The embargo being when Apple has finally said, hey, you can finally talk about this. You can finally share with the world what you've been experiencing this past week using the iPad. The final release of the iPad, not the beta iPad that they had at that uh, announcement, but the final iPad, the one that you'll be getting on your hands this Saturday, I won't be uh, receiving my iPad until late April, April 24th, as we're seeing for the 3G model. So it'll be a long month waiting as I've already seen my accessories. My iPad dock is set to ship out. It's been prepared for shipment. So I'll be waiting about a couple weeks here with an empty dock just waiting to fill that up with the iPad. And my case should be arriving just a few days before the iPad. So this is almost a benefit, not quite, uh, for the 3G folks is that we'll actually be getting all of our accessories ahead of time. We'll be able to plan out. We'll be able to scope out the app store for the latest latest apps and kind of budget our money for apps before we even get the device. So that's kind of a perk. I would personally rather have them both released to this April 3rd so I could have to get my iPad a few weeks later and on Monday be able to show it off and play around with it. But uh, it'll all be all, it'll be all right waiting those few weeks for the iPad. But some really cool insights I've been seeing. The first is Scrabble. We've been talking about the Scrabble app since day one of the iPad. We've been talking about what if you had the Scrabble board on your iPad and then you could use your iPhones and iPod touches to interact with your iPad, holding your tiles on your iPhone. And it's been announced by different reviewers, Andy and Nako and a couple of the other reviewers that Scrabble has built the app. It's going to be there on April 3rd and I'm, we're going to be playing with this hopefully that uh, you'll be able to have your tile pieces on your iPhone. And it connects over Bluetooth, so you can have as many iPhones connected to that Scrabble board. And it'll be really cool, because you'll have that iPad, that shared device, as we talked about on Wednesday. The iPad is a shared device, and your iPhone or iPod Touch as your personal viewer screen, your personal tile rack. You'll be able to flick your tiles off the iPhone and onto the iPad. So that is going to be an incredible game, an incredible way to just share your iPad and just have a whole lot of fun playing Scrabble. This is one of the most perfect use cases I can see, and it's so exciting to see on day one. They've already seen the potential. They've already seen the possibilities of using it like this. And that is one of the coolest things I saw from day one from the reviewers reviewing the iPad. So we'll have more on Saturday about that. Another cool revelation that has come out from the release of the iPad from the embargo is the battery in the iPad. Now, most times when companies release a battery estimate, they most of the time under, they oversell it basically. They said 10 hours. You get 10 hours of battery life. And what we've been seeing, what the reviewers have been saying, is you'll be getting more than 10 hours if all you're doing is video playback. You'll be getting more like 11 to 12 hours of just straight video playback. You'll be able to play video for half the day straight, nonstop on the iPad, on a single charge. This is Video stuff. This is intense stuff you're doing with the iPad. Think about more casual things they'll be doing with the iPad. You'd be taking notes, I would imagine, for 24 hours. You'd be doing the less processor intense things for a full day. For literally 24 hours, it could almost compare to the Newton in that aspect. The Newton has about a 24-hour battery life. Now, the iPad, they've managed to do 
practically the same thing as far as battery life. They've given us this incredible battery. So that is one very cool thing. The battery inside the iPad is an amazing one. You won't need to buy a Mophie battery case in most cases. And that's exciting. That is exciting. And another cool thing that Andy Inaka was sharing last night when he unveiled the iPad on MacBreak is the heat issue. Most laptops you buy have a heat issue. You can't just put them on your laps and enjoy a movie because the heat builds up. It takes a lot of processing power. The fans are blasting to get all the processor things up and running. But with the iPad, Andy has been telling us there are no heat issues. It is silent because there aren't any fans. And this is a, was a concern for me because the iPhone, if you're doing intense things on the iPhone, heat does build up. It's not too bad because it's all in your hand. But with the iPad, I was concerned that perhaps heat might be an issue. But as Andy has been telling us, it won't be. Heat won't be an issue. It'll be practically the best device for consuming video on a mobile platform because of that. And the speaker is also incredible, as I've been hearing from Andy Anako. It's going to be a great speaker. It will amaze you. It'll be just as good as your laptop speakers. And that's something real to say. And another cool thing. This is the last cool insight I'm going to share with you. Uh, today, at least, is the reviewers have been seeing the iPad as a real computer. The iPhone and iPod Touch are real computers, but they're so limited by their speed, by their screen size, that you can't really call them a real computer. But most of the reviewers I have been reading, Walt Mossberg, Andy Anako, David Pogue, have been calling the iPad a real computer, a real viable option to replace your laptop with. The real, a real option to use as a mobile computer to do most of the things you would use your laptop for. And I'm anticipating that I will be using the iPad for most, for 90% of what I use my computers for. And that is exciting. Because everyone's been calling it, hey, it's just a big iPod Touch. And that's a huge compliment. People don't understand the huge compliment they're paying it by calling it a huge iPod Touch. The iPod Touch is limited uh, limited by the screen size. And by having it a huge iPod Touch, what a compliment. And it truly is a real computer. So that is another amazing thing I've been seeing coming out that the reviews are positive. This Generation 1 product is getting huge results with the reviews. People are loving it. It's going to be one of the most successful Apple products to date, I believe. And this is just a very exciting time to be in this tech world, to see what's coming up for computers. And as I've been hearing on Mac Voices this week, it's been known that Apple has actually been working on the iPad for many years. It was the initial thought, the initial idea of what the iPhone and iPod touches now. The reason it comes out now is because they could not get the technology to a low enough cost to give it to us, to sell it to us, where anyone would buy it. So they came up with this concept. They came up with this technology for the iPad originally. Then they scoped it back down for the mobile devices. And now, finally, we're getting our hands on the original conception of the Apple Touch operating system and i can only see this growing in the coming years as iphone 4.0 apple touch 5.0 6.0 7.0 imagine 10.0 imagine a few years from now when that all happens so this is the beginning of something big and this saturday is going to be an amazing day an amazing day to see the iPad descend upon this world, descend upon the mass market finally. And this will just be a simply exciting month because I'll be waiting anxiously as the iPad 3G ships out and the rest of the world. So April 24th is kind of the next countdown day for the rest of the world. That's the rumor date for when those will begin to come upon the rest of the world 
outside the United States and the 3G customers. So the excitement is growing, and this will be simply an exciting month. So I'll be sharing much more, much more on Saturday for a full day of coverage. And next week, we'll be editing those shows we record Saturday. I imagine we'll have a bunch of of extra shows. Perhaps we might have a show a day for the next week as we have all that information we recorded for you on Saturday. We'll be get, uh, editing that down and recording it and getting it all out to you next week if you can't join us on Saturday We'll pretty much have daily shows next week. It'll be a pretty incredible week as we push out new episodes and make our way further along discovering the iPad and the possibilities and potential of this new Apple device, this new computing platform. So please join us on Saturday for the iPad Possibilities Podcast live all day. Another quick thought before I leave you today is the manner in which you'll be able to transfer documents to the iPad. Andy Anaka was talking to us last night, and it's really simple now. Apple's actually done this very simply. It could be done better, but this is really cool. When you dock your iPad to iTunes, you'll be able to drag and drop documents that are supported by the applications directly in there. You won't have to go through any Wi-Fi messiness or anything like that. But it's built into the operating system now that you'll be able to drag and drop pages, documents, PDFs, music, whatever you need. You can simply drag and drop them onto the app within iTunes and it'll sync over to your iPad. So that's one quick thought and one quick thought I wanted to add in here before I leave you until tomorrow morning or Saturday morning whenever you do get this show. So that's one quick thought. So it seems that whenever I try to finish this show, something new comes out in the iPad world. Something new is revealed to us. And as I'm recording this right now, iTunes is now showing your iPad apps. That's right. If you go to the Apple iTunes store and simply search for an iPad app, you'll find it. You'll find on the Grapple. You'll find all of those other apps like Pages, Keynote, Numbers for the iPad. So uh, it's pretty cool. Right now I'm browsing through the App Store and seeing brushes for 10 bucks is available. And at Bat 2010 for iPads available, E-Trade, USA Today, eBay has an iPad special app. We Rule for the iPad is an app I love for the iPhone. And they've got an iPad special app for free. And it's it's a blast right now, browsing through the App Store, seeing all of those apps. I'm seeing now there's scales and modes for the iPad. There's another music app that, this looks incredible. There are all sorts of apps, and this is going to be just a blast, browsing through the parade, the bombardment of iPad apps that are ready at launch, and I'll be picking out the ones that I want to be looking over when my iPad arrives, and also tomorrow. So if you uh, don't have enough things to do tonight, you can always browse through the iTunes App Store and start finding your iPad apps that you want to buy and download and start installing on your iPad when it arrives. So I wanted to throw in this last final thought before I finish up this episode. It seems that it There keeps on being more things that keep on getting announced, more things that keep on happening before I can actually finish this episode just because of all the news that is coming out this day on the iPad. And it is just an exciting time. So I'm going to close the new, the content of this show here and we'll close up the show right now. So to wrap up the show, I'd like to ask for your guys' feedback. 
at 209-542-IPAD and at iPadPossibilities at gmail.com. Please send in all the feedback you can. Send in what it is like for you to experience the iPad on hand. What the Apple Store situation was like. What was it like to pick it up? What was your experience with the iPad this Saturday? What are your questions regarding the iPad? I'd love to answer all of your questions. We'll be having an iPad on hand on Saturday and testing out all sorts of applications, all sorts of use cases. So send in your questions to 209-542-IPAD and we'll get those covered. We'll get those answered over the coming days. And if you get them in by Saturday, we'll get those questions answered on Saturday for you during the live day of coverage. To support this podcast, you can do that in one of many ways. Simply subscribe in iTunes. That's a huge support for us. Also, leave a review in iTunes. I would love to hear your feedback through that venue. It helps us be more visible in the iTunes podcast community. So please write a review. They really help me out. They have helped me tweak a couple things about the show already. And I'd really love your feedback there. And also to support the show financially, you can do that by purchasing the iPad Possibly's podcast app found in the App Store for $2.99. And with that podcast app, you get the show 24 hours in advance. You get the show Monday, Wednesday, and Friday instead of Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So you can find an app store by searching the iPad Possibilities podcast. And also, you can support the show by donating to the show at thepossibilitiesnetwork.com. Just go to the iPad Possibilities page, scroll down, help Tim buy an iPad, and just donate there. And all donations help fund this show, give you better content, more up-to-date content, and will help me test out things as you need it. And also, please support our sponsor, It's On My Way, by going to the App Store and purchasing It's On My Way for $2.99. Until Saturday morning, live from the road, this is Tim Chatton of the iPad Possibilities Podcast. For more information, go to thepossibilitiesnetwork.com for a whole network of shows on possibilities and potential. Until Saturday, this is Tim.